Our fifth and final business item is a share in a proposal requesting a report on sugar and public health. This proposal and the board's response are on page 95 of your proxy statement. Mr. Rogers will present the proposal. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kent. I'm here representing John Harrington. Before I introduce John Harrington's proposal on sugar and public health, I want to ask two remarkable women who have traveled long distances to be at this meeting to stand up and be recognized. Dr. Esperanza Cerrone, please stand up, Dr. Cerrone, has come here from Colombia. And Rebecca Berner is here representing Mexico's leading consumer organization, El Podor del Consumidor. Rebecca, Re Rebecca, over there, thank you. No countries have been harder hit than Mexico and Colombia with skyrocketing rates of obesity, diabetes, and other serious health issues attributed to high consumption of sugar, and especially what's referred to as liquid sugar, found in sodas, energy, and sports drinks. I hope, Mr. Chair, that you will give both these women an opportunity to address why it is so important to our nations and the world's health, and especially the health of children, that large Coca-Cola share owners like Warren Buffett, Bill and Melinda Gates, the Vanguard Group, and BlackRock vote in support of the proposal. There is mounting scientific evidence showing that there is a national and worldwide health crisis being caused by overconsumption of sugar and that the Coca-Cola company, following the playbook of the tobacco industry, is trying to downplay the crisis and the scientific evidence. Harrington, who heads up an investment company, is also trying to wake up and warn investors and potential investors in Coca-Cola that if the company continues along the path of keeping its head in the sand and trying to deceive the public by funding front groups and producing junk science and bogus reports downplaying the detrimental effects of sugar consumption on health, the company's overall value could be at risk and plummet. Mr. Harrington's proposal makes a simple request that the board of directors issue a report on sugar and health and public health with support from a group of independent and nationally recognized scientists and scholars providing critical feedback on Coca-Cola's sugar products and especially those products targeted to children and young consumers. Third-party publications cannot fulfill the board oversight required by the proposal and Coca-Cola's publications on the subject are misleadingly incomplete. Frankly, every executive and member of the board should welcome this proposal and give it a thumbs up. One last thing, you met the, you, uh, in, the, uh, in the opposition, the company's opposition to the proposal, you mentioned the Access to Nutrition Foundation, a respected independent nonprofit organization which is based in the Netherlands, already produced reports covering our company that encompasses sugar and public health, and we believe addresses the essential objectives thought by the proposal. Well, let me tell you, the Access to Nutrition Foundation and, uh, has an index. Coca-Cola is down the bottom, way below Pepsi and Nestle and other companies. But you want to know something? Even their scores are terrible. So Coca-Cola in the industry has a lot to do to make things better. One last thing. To learn more about the arguments posed to the Securities and Exchange Commission whether to order Coca-Cola to include the resolution on its 2019 proxy statement, a battle Coca-Cola obviously lost, please visit our new revamped website, www.killercoke.org. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Um, you actually um, uh, talked about really why we believe, or what is our board's position on this proposal. This proposal requests specifically that the board issue a report on sugar and public health with support from a group of independent, nationally recognized scientists and scholars. That's what the proposal is about. And the Access to Nutrition Foundation, which is a respected nonprofit organization based in Holland and is funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation already produces reports covering our company that encompasses 
Sugar includes public health, and we believe addresses the essential goals sought by that proposal. The Access to Nutrition reports most recently published was 2018, last year, provided, and it, that report provided a detailed analysis and commentary on leading food and beverage manufacturers' efforts to improve consumers' access to nutritious beverages and foods. These reports are designed to be used by various different stakeholder groups, including academia, including civil society organizations. All of this is outlined on page 96 in very simple, plain English. Additional reporting, as requested in the proposal, would provide no useful information that is not already covered in the Access to Nutrition reports. And the last one that was published, as I, as I said, was in 2018. Importantly, importantly, though, let me just again stress that we certainly recognize the role our company must play in addressing health challenges. The, this proposal might you, lead you to believe that our company is not a responsible player in this area, and nothing, nothing could be further from the truth. Our company fully comprehends that people should not eat or drink too much sugar. We are taking also specific and meaningful actions to assist, to help, to make consumers more aware uh, about more easily and more easily control the consumption of added sugar. Just to give you a couple of bullet points, 425,000 tons of sugar have been removed from the market through product reformulations and packages. Only in 2018, last year, 400 products were reformulated alone, bringing the total to 800. So only in one year, we took as much as was reformulated in the past and did reformulations in last year of 400 more products. Products with no sugar that we have are growing double digits like Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. And 40% um, now, 40% of our sparkling soft drink brands in the U.S. come in eight and a half ounce mini cans. And North America last year saw a 30% growth in its mini cans. So, and we finally, we finally support the WHO recommendation in limiting added sugar to 10% uh, of the total diet. We support that. Publicly, we've said that. So those are just a few uh, bullet points. And I don't know if our CEO, James, would like to add anything. I think, I think he covered yeah. it. 